Hello and welcome back. Today we will be discussing how to set up your CPAP at home. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to stay updated on all things CPAP. Also, be sure to stick around until the end of this video to learn how you can save extra on your CPAP supplies. And as always, this video is sponsored by Reshop.com. All right, let's do a quick recap of our previous videos. Psst, if you haven't seen them already, I've linked the playlist here. In previous videos, we've discussed pressure settings and how they dictate what machines we need. Now, after acquiring a CPAP machine, you must have your doctor or CPAP provider set the machine for you according to your prescription, including the level of pressure relief needed, if any. This is due to the fact that all machines have a clinician menu only doctors and providers are able to access. Once the CPAP is set, now we can look at user comfort settings. We will begin to look at a few common CPAP machines to show you how to change things like humidification or mask settings. Our first machine we will look at is the AirSense 10 by ResMed. Of course, first we will need to plug in our machine. You can find this usually on the back of the machine, but also look on the side. Once we plug it in, the ResMed symbol will appear. Then it will take us to the main menu. You will see My Options and Sleep Report. Sleep Report is your data from the night before, while My Options is the part we are looking for. Zooming in here so you can see the screen better. You will first see Ramp Time, which is turned off currently on our settings. Select it by pressing in the dial. Now you can rotate to either turn it to a certain time period which is all the way up to 45, or select a lesser time period. Make a selection by rotating the dial and pressing in. Next up is your humidity level. Select it. Now you can bring the humidity level all the way up to eight, or you can turn it completely off. Your level depends on how much humidity you want from your water chamber while sleeping. Next on the list is pressure relief. Select. Here you can turn it on or off. Next is Smart Start. This just means that the machine will automatically start once you breathe into it. Again, you can turn this on or off. Next up is Mask Type. Select. Once you select your mask type, the machine will adjust your pressure accordingly. Next is your tube type. Here, you can choose between slimline tubing or standard tubing, but you can also choose a standard tube. Next, you will see Run Mask Fit. This allows you to check and see if there's any air leaks followed by run warm up. This allows you to preheat your humidifier. Next is an option for an airplane mode, followed finally by about, which allows you to see all the extra information about your machine. Now let's take a look at the Dream Station Auto by Philips Respironics. You will notice on this machine that the power port is on the side rather than on the back of the machine. Connect your power cord here. You will start by seeing my info. This is a section where you can check your sleep data. By rotating the dial and pushing in, you can select to preheat your water chamber, or you can turn this off. Keep turning right until you see my setup. This is where you can change your settings. Your starting ramp pressure will be locked by the clinician menu. However, you can change the time that your ramp is run for. Flex, otherwise known as pressure relief, will also be locked. Next is an option for your humidification. You can have this as a fixed pressure or you can have it adapt as the night goes on. Next is mask type. If you have a Philips Respironics mask, you will find your correlating number on the cushion. If you have a mask of any other brand, we recommend turning this feature off. Tube type is dictated by your tubing diameter. However, if you have heated tubing attached, this feature will be locked. Next is your language setting followed by your Bluetooth setting. You can turn this feature on or off. Finally is your clock, which you can adjust time, and then you have an option to go back to the main menu. Once these are set, we can now move on to tubing. But before we get into tubing, here is a quick word from our sponsor, Rest Shop. Rest Shop carries a comprehensive list of CPAP supplies, 
and its expert staff is always available to assist you from choosing the right equipment to answering any question you might have. And now, new CPEP users can save 10% with the code NEW at checkout. See the description for details. Depending on what CPAP unit you have, you may or may not have an option for heated tubing. If you do, heated tubing is a great option for those whose room temperature often falls below 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This is because sometimes the heated vapor from your water chamber can instead become liquid water if it becomes too cool in temperature. To counteract this, heated tubing keeps the vapor warm all the way from your CPAP to you. However, that said, heated tubing is not always best for the average CPAP user. Not only is it costly when compared with regular tubing, but it still has to be replaced every three to six months like normal tubing. So to save money, if you don't need it, we don't recommend heated tubing. Save it for the winter. Once you've decided which tubing, you can connect it like so. Next, we will connect your mask. This is simple to do. Just locate the end of the tubing and connect directly to the connector on your mask. Be sure to make a tight connection as a loose connection can leak air. Next, we will turn on our CPAP machine. This will be different for each machine, however, but most buttons are very similar. Now, put on your mask and begin to run your hand along the tubing from your machine to the mask connection. Check for any escaping air and adjust as needed. Your mask will have a built-in pressure valve to release any excess air. Please be aware this is a normal part of a functioning mask. However, if you feel any air leaking from around the sides of your cushion, you may need to adjust your mask or get a different cushion size. We recommend checking for air leaks about once a week until you become comfortable with your new CPAP. Remember, cushions should be replaced every three to six months along with your tubing, as this prevents any air leaks. Any comments or questions? Let us know in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. Join us next time as we discuss how to properly clean your CPAP equipment, as well as different cleaning options. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.